All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Mitch Ribeck. Uh, I am with EXP Realty. I've been training and coaching for about 15 years now and decided over the last year or so that I just really don't like coaching and charging people to coach. So I just give everything away for free now. So every once in a while, I do these these uh, events and uh, give my stuff away. So one of the things that's been really interesting over the past uh 15 years of training is talking to agents and a lot of them with their lack of success. And it mainly comes down just to commitment to a process and implementation, right? That's kind of how this all works. It's not that difficult, but yet a lot of people make it more difficult by, um, by, by doing, uh, you know, not doing anything or not implementing anything. So on this uh, webinar, we're going to give you uh, really a way to make $100,000 a year. And by the way, I just taught this in San Diego. There it was how to make $250,000 a year because obviously their prices are better than our prices. Uh, our prices here where we are are about $250,000 uh, on an average in uh, Melbourne, Florida. Of course, we have programs that are more expensive. We have programs that are less expensive. Um, but it gives you an idea what's what we have. So my first question I ask people all the time is what business are we in? And normally when I'm talking to a live audience, I'll wait till I answer. Here's the, here's the answers I always get. We're in the people business. We're in the relationship business. We're in the blah, 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 blah business. Here's the business that we're in. We're in the lead generation business, right? I don't care what anybody says about anything. Any business that is anything is in the lead generation business. If you are not generating leads, you are not generating sales. Now, for those of you that know me, and I know a lot of people do on here, uh, you know, I've been teaching the internet stuff for a billion years, uh, you know, Tropical Realty, my brokers we had until we merged with EXP uh, a couple of years ago, it was the best in the country at lead conversion. Uh, but here's the reality is internet leads are great. Most, if not 99% of the agents will never, ever actually work them. So I don't talk about that that much anymore because I want to give you things that are very easy to execute that, by the way, don't cost you any money to speak of. Okay. So we're going to get through that. Yesterday I was, I was with a, um, I was on a, a listing appointment big commercial piece. And one of the guys that introduced me to the owner uh, used to be a public speaker. And I love talking to people that are other public speakers besides myself, because it's really interesting to learn their techniques and stuff. And he would start every presentation with this. And I was just looking at it. He's like, what does it mean? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm going to tell you what it means. because I think it's really cool. And I'm going to start using it every where I go. And I don't think he'll ever see me speak because he's probably close to 80. So People don't care what you know until they know you care. We are in the relationship business, but if you have no leads, you have no relationships, right? So anyway, I just thought that was really cool. So I'm going to start using that. I love that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is open houses. Now, I know some of you are probably rolling your eyes. Oh, my God, open houses, they don't work. They generally don't work because you don't know how to do them. So by the time we're done today, you're going to know exactly how to do them. One of the things that I will tell you is, and, and ask you is if you are going to do this stuff, follow it exactly how I've laid it out. I'm going to give you some numbers real quick. I started the, my business in 2001. I knew zero people. Well, I knew my girlfriend. She wasn't buying a house for me. And everybody told me not to do open houses. It was the first thing. I walked in the first day, my new brokerage, all excited about real estate, not having any training, no clue what to do. And I had a person come up to me and tell me, don't do open houses, don't do floor time, which nobody does anymore, and don't do uh, internet. Well, my background was internet. I was the first online dating service, so that was really fun. So if you need any dating advice, let me know. I'm pretty good at it still. And open houses, people are coming to me. So how can people coming to me be a bad thing? Right? I don't like chasing business. I like business to come to me. So my first year, I had 36 transactions. Out of those 36 transactions, 28 of them for, were from open houses. My next year, I had 50 transactions. My third year, I had 80 transactions. My fourth year, I had 80 transactions. And the worst amount of sales I had from open houses every year was 24. So pretty much if you follow this program, I'm not going to guarantee you because I guarantee most of you won't follow this the way it's supposed to be, but you will, you will sell 24 homes a year if you follow this program. But it's all about consistency. 
in all of marketing is consistency. Right? I actually say marketing equals consistency, which equals sales. I don't care what you decide to do in your business career. If you choose, if you are not consistent in what you do, it doesn't work. And what I find with most realtors uh, is they're always chasing the shiny object. You know, I have, I have, you know, we we grow pretty big. We have a pretty large group here in Florida and a pretty large group around the country that I work with. And the first thing that when I interview an agent, the first thing, number one, they say to me, are you going to give me leads? Can I have some leads? Well, you know what? Le leads are like lead prison. So a brokerage or a team that's giving you leads, and I'm not, you know, for some of you guys, it's great. It's the best thing you can do. But if you want to build your business, then you need to gener generate your own leads. And that's not getting addicted to Zillow or Realtor.com or, or any of those things. It's about grassroots, right? Grassroots marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're only going to talk about two different things that I do. And this is pretty much how I built my business until I introduced my internet stuff uh, big time in 2004 and five. Okay, so open houses, awesome stuff. There's a lot of science to this. And, and when I test things, by the way, I don't test things for a day or a week. I don't do shiny objects like most filters do. I, I really look at things and I look at numbers and I, I perfect systems. So the things we're going to talk to you about today are things that I did and things that I, well, I don't do anymore because I really don't want to sell more homes. I still sell 30 or 40 homes a year, but I don't want to and I don't really enjoy it anymore. So picking the right house, that's the most important thing to do. Uh, first of all, no gated communities because gated communities are a pain in the butt to, to do an open house. Uh, I always want there to be two or more active listings in the neighborhood or close by, and I'll explain that in a minute. I definitely want them vacant if possible. And I like ones that are going to be on the market for some time. The first open house that I did, and by the way, I started on uh, September 10, 2001. The next day, we kind of stopped. That Saturday, I did my first open house and wrote my first contract. Uh, so, again, these things work really, really well. So why do I want two more active listings in the neighborhood? I want to be when somebody comes in, and we'll talk about a little more detail on this, I want to have other options than just the house that I'm showing that I'm holding open right now. Uh, why do I want them vacant? Because if I have to leave, I don't want to, uh, I don't want anybody getting upset to me, all right? And why do I want someone to be on the same, on, on the market for some time? Because I want that person, I want that same location every week, right? Consistency, right? It's the same house every week. And we're gonna get more details. So here's how I did my open houses. I did when I first started, I did Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 4. Right now, I know people do 1 to 3 or 12 to 2 or 12 to 3. My thing is, if you're going to work an open house, work an open house. It pays off dramatically, but you need but you need to work it. And by the way, these days with all of the wireless stuff that we have, why not work out of a vacant house as your office? Right? I mean, you don't go to the office anyways. You sit at home right? every day. Everybody sits at home doing their work. I will guarantee you a billion percent that nobody's going to come knocking on your door saying, hey, hey, Bill, you know, you look like a nice guy. You have a nice house. Will you list my house for me? It doesn't work that way. And by the way, my first two years in the business, my first eight listings all came from open houses. Okay. So if you have nothing going on, why not sit in a vacant house every day? Here's the thing that everybody fights me on. You never want to advertise an open house. And by the way, none of my agents listen to me on this. And the reason why you don't advertise an open house, first of all, only 10% of the people are going to come to your house from an ad. That's a fact. That's a number, okay? 90% uh, are going to come from your signs. So put out lots of signs. I used to put out somewhere between 20 and 30 signs uh, every open house I had. You could not miss me. I would put like five signs in a row uh, at the entrance on both sides of the road. You can't miss it. Um, I do balloons, I do open house flags, all that stuff. But the reason why I don't advertise is because I want to be able to leave. If I'm stuck at the house someday, I, and I'll give you an example of this. So I did 10 to 4. I was told to advertise it. So I advertised it in the paper. I advertised it wherever you could advertise it back then. And I remember the, probably the second or third open house that came in, a guy came in and I said to him, which I always say is, you know, would you like to look at property today? I could show you more properties. He says, that'd be great. I go, great. Well, I don't get off till four. This is 10, 15 in the morning. I go, I can meet you back here at four. Would that be great? He goes, yeah, that sounds great. Of course, four o'clock comes by, 4.15. I'm texting, not texting, calling the guy. We didn't text back then. Calling the guy and 
no response, no response. And, and I never, I never got that person. If I, so what I learned after that is if I don't advertise, I can leave. So therefore, so if that guy comes in at 10, 15 now, I can say, look, if you want to go look at more properties, I'll just pick up my signs. Let's go look. Easy. I made several sales and I didn't track how many sales I made from that specific um, tidbit, but I made a lot of sales by just having the flexibility to leave. Okay. Any questions about this so far? By the way, on the, there's a questions box. And if you have questions, just put them in there and maybe I'll answer them. So what do you need? You don't need a lot of stuff. You need a wireless laptop because if someone wants to look at other properties, you want to be able to show them that. Uh, and I can't imagine anybody doesn't have wireless laptops now. Uh, do not print out any material. You're going to want to send it to them in a text or an email. Do not print out listings in the neighborhood. And by the way, this is the way I used to always print out all this stuff. But now with the technology, you don't need to. Uh, don't print out, print out listings in the surrounding neighborhoods. You want to be able to um, engage them. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, always have some water on hand uh, or soda or something, some sort of finger food. I don't care if it's just donuts. It doesn't matter, cookies. Uh, but have something to give them, okay? That's all you need. That's you know, There's really no cost. You need, and lots of signs. You need lots of signs. So what we're going to talk about right now it's just a couple of the messagings that I use, uh, and they're really, really important, so I want you to understand that. Oh, I got a question there. So the question I have, and by the way, I'll answer these as we go so I don't get a whole bunch of them at the end. The question I have, so what hours are you telling the listing agent you'll be holding their house open? Um, I tell them that I'm going to be there, right, from 10 to whatever. Um, but if I um, I do tell them. I said if I get a if I get a buyer that comes in and wants to look at property, I'm going to close it down. That's just it. Now, obviously, if it's your own listings, it's a piece of cake, right? That's why I do vacant houses because I don't want to put anybody out. Uh, if you're doing somebody else's listing, you just got to tell them. Be honest. I'm not I'm not one to 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 fake things or lie to people. I'm like, look, this is everybody knows knows we do open houses to generate leads, right? If I have someone that wants to look at houses right now. And they're in the price range I want, which is, uh, again, when I'm picking my house, I'm going to be in the price range that I want. Why would I? I'm, I'm going to leave. And, and honestly, I've, you know, I did that at the beginning because I didn't have any listings and nobody cared. It wasn't a big deal. All right. So messaging, really important. Um, instead of saying, are you working with a realtor, which is what almost everybody I know says, ask him which realtor in town are you working with? So why do we do that? We do that because if you're working, if they're working with a realtor, they have they'll say their name. If they're not working with a realtor, they won't have a, a quick answer most of the time. And uh, when you're saying, "Are you working with a realtor?" the typical answer is yes, right? And you guys all know that if you're doing open houses and you're asking that question, most people say yes. When you say which realtor in town are you working with, they have to give you a quick answer. Little change of words, but it's a huge difference. And I learned that really quickly when I was doing my first open houses, when I first started doing this, is that people were saying yes to me all the time. And then even when people started saying, yeah, I'm working with Bill Smith, I now I say, you know, are you working with Bill Smith or is Bill just sending you listings? Uh, has, he, have you shown, has he shown you any property yet? If they're not showing property to that person, they're not working with that person. I would never steal anybody from anybody. It's not my nature. It's not my ethics, not my morals. So if someone tells me, yeah, I'm working with Bill Smith and, you know, we've been out looking at property. I'm all over Bill Smith. But if I find out they've only, you know, registered on his website or he was a Zillow lead or they were a Zillow lead or something like that, there's no, there's no relationship there in my, in my opinion. So I'll work with them. The next one is why did I say you want to pick two homes down the street? or around the neighborhood or somewhere within a mile usually. Because what I want to say is, by the way, there's two more homes uh, down the, in the neighborhood that are similar to this, similar price range. Would you like to go look at them? I would say around 80% of the time they say yes. So I have a little clock thing that says be back in 30 minutes. I don't take my signs down. I just put a little clock thing, be back in 30 minutes. And then I, I take them to those homes. And why do I do that? Because if you spend 30 with, minutes with me, you're going to love me, right? <laughs> All right, that might be a little <laughs> a little push, but you might like me at least. Um, and I have more time to bond with people. You know, one of the few gifts I have in my life is that I bond really quickly with people. I've, I've learned to um, 
to depend and no matter who they are i don't care if they're in, uh you know we have rocket scientists here in on the space coast of florida i can bond with them as quickly as i can bond with a rocker I was, i'm an ex-rocker uh as bond with a rock with a baseball player because i'm an ex-baseball player so all those things you know i bond with and if i it's hard to bond in five minutes when you're meeting with somebody but it's really easy to bond uh if you have a half hour and by the way we're going to talk in a few minutes about the how to build that relationship when you're with people because a lot of people don't don't do it correctly uh the other thing i do is you know if you'd like i can share all the other homes in the you know in the area now would you like to look at more homes and say all i gotta do is pick up my signs and we'll go on the on the on my computer right now and take a look at some homes to set appointments and we'll go do it very simple uh another thing i've done that's done really well for me on capturing leads is uh you know one of the things i like to do is uh is set all my people that come into my open houses up on getting new listings uh, as you know, the market's pretty tight right now. If you don't see the listings when they come on, you'll miss out on them. Would you like me to do that? Uh, we use a program in-house called KV Core. Uh, KV Core gives us an open house app, which goes directly into our CRM. We've had a lot of luck with that. Uh, I'm going to assume that several of you CRMs now have open house apps. I'm not sure. And then my other one that I love, and I learned this actually last week in San Diego when I was training my group. And... They don't do any paper at all. It's us. I've kind of changed all my stuff based on this, what I learned. Because, you know, I'm always learning too. I'm not, I've never said that I was the most perfect person in the world. Of course, I tell my wife I am, but she doesn't really actually believe that. But anyways, so what I said, if you, you know, actually I ran out of baseball cards. Would you mind if I text you my info? Right. Or can I text you the listing? We don't do anything with paper anymore. Right. And what that does is it gets you, it gets your information, right? If you get their phone number, that's the biggest thing. So so you can do that. So if you're having trouble getting people to, to register, and by the way, all of this goes by confidence. So if someone comes into my open house, I did it all by registering. Um, again, we didn't have texting back then in 2001. Uh, so if someone came to my open house, I always try to set them up in listing updates. Uh, I would say something that my broker requires that uh, everybody register because of safety reasons. Whatever it is that is your message to get people to do it, whatever works best for you, um, but if you're out and about, and this has nothing to do with open houses, but if you're out and about and you meet somebody, instead of giving them car the, your cards, say, look, I don't carry cards, or I, I left them at home, uh, do you mind if I text you my info? I did this last night. Last night I was at my grandson's baseball game, and I was talking to a person, and I sponsored the baseball field we're at, and I had my EXP Realty shirt on, and we started talking. And they said, are you in real estate? I said, well, my friend's looking to buy a house. I go, yeah, I'd love to work with them. So he goes, do you have a card? I said, no. I go, let me text you my information, right? Now I can call my friend that I met, my new friend, and I can get that information from them, from them about the, their person. I always try to get that person to give me their friend's information versus me saying, give your information to them. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it does. Um, I got a comment here. Uh, Pre-write the text you were going to send them in a link to the property and paste it into yes. So that's a great comment. Um, so basically what they're saying is I already have the link already pre-pasted into your notes on your uh, on a section of your phone. So then you can just copy and paste it right into a, a text for them. Thanks for that, Greg. Very true. All right, any questions on messaging? Messaging is everything. How you say things is going to determine how well you do in this. The most important thing I learned in this thing was which realtor in town are you working with? In the texting, both great things. Okay. Um, I want to talk for a few minutes about building relationships, and this is really geared toward um, whether you're in person or on the phone. Uh, everybody, everybody I hear on the phone sounds like they want to get off the phone as quickly as they can. My goal when I'm talking with a customer on the phone is I want to be on the phone for as long as I can. Because the longer I spend on the phone with them, the more loyalty I create and the more I get to, them to like me as a friend. I talk very little about real estate. I mean, how long does it take to say I want a three-bedroom, two-bath in Melbourne for under $300,000? Right? I can do that in less than 30 seconds. So what I talk about is I talk about their family and the questions I ask, you know, so tell me about your family. Tell me what you guys like to do for fun. Do you have any kids? Or if there's somebody that's looking for retirement, do you have any grandkids? You know? Things like that. Talk about their lifestyle. Do you like to golf? Do you like the beach? Uh, do you, you know, do you like mountains? If you like mountains, we're, we're the wrong place to come to in Florida. Um, 
ask questions to create that relationship. And one of the things I'm always talking about, especially if they have kids or grandkids, like when you, and, and again, if some of you guys know me, if you see me talk about Lola and Henry, my two grandkids, I light up like a, like a, I don't know, like a light, <laughs> uh, really bright because, you know, they're the whole purpose of my life right now is my grandkids. That's the whole reason why I've done everything I've done is for my grandkids. And when you start talking to some about their kids and learning about them, that creates an immediate bond, especially if you have kids or if you have grandkids, things like that. If they're from, for instance, if I'm talking to somebody from New England, I'm going to create that bond. You know, whatever, I'm looking for that bond. But I'm also going to take really, really good notes. Now, you can't do really good notes, notes when you're talking to somebody usually because that's kind of weird. But sometimes you can. depends on the situation. Um, yeah, but I'm going to put down everything I can remember into notes. And I'm going to call a week later and, and just say, Hey, so I, you know, Billy's playing baseball. How's Billy game? How's Billy's game this week? Uh, hey, I know your sister had. You were telling me your sister had surgery last week. How's she doing? Make this personal. The more personal you make this, the easier this is. And really, trust me, this is really, really easy. And by the way, it's way more fun, right? Do you have conversations with people that have nothing to do with real estate all the time? Of course you do. We all do. Don't think of them as a lead. Think of them as a person. Think of them as a friend. Uh, I will tell you that. The, I've been in the business now for 19 years, and in 19 years, all my friends that I'm close to here, besides my agents that I became really close to, who are my family, uh, they're all friends of mine. I have friends of mine. I got an email this morning from a, a woman. Uh, her husband's an astronaut here. She's a professor, and you know we haven't talked in about two years since the last property she bought from us. And she texts us when we going to dinner. You know, those are the relationships you want. You want to build relations where people are actually going to reach out to you and say, hey, how are you doing? I don't do anything to generate sales anymore. I, I don't at all. Because uh, as I said earlier, I'm trying to sell less homes this more because I have a different mission I'm on these days for my business. Um, yet I sell 30 to 40 homes a year just from people calling me and saying, hey, you know, Marilyn told you I should call you. Uh, So-and-so told me you're the best, things like that. So build relationships, don't build leads. Okay, so I'm going to go by how the numbers work, and this is really important that you understand this stuff because this is really, it's so easy. I, I can't, if you follow the system the way it is, it, you'll realize that you can change your life today in this business. And by the way, none of my top producers in my company, well, except maybe one or two, work more than four hours a day. I was talking to one of my agents last week. I said, how many hours a day do you work? You made about $140,000 last year. I think it was four maybe five, five days a week. Think about that. He's working 20 hours a week, maybe 25 hours a week and making $140,000, about 30 transactions a year, if not more. Crazy, right? Um, so what you do today will generate sales for you in 90 days. So what does that mean? Uh, remember the shiny object conversation? Agents will do something and then they'll quit after a week, after one or two open houses. And here's what I hear. Oh, the only person that came through was the nosy neighbor. I only got two people that came through. Uh, I, I, you know, he, I, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Because I like my stories. I'm a golfer now because right? I'm getting old. And when you're old, you just golf, especially here in Florida. So I've been playing the same golf course every Saturday since 2001. So I played the golf course there about a thousand times. And there's one hole there, which is the hottest hole in the course for me. It's hole number seven. It's par five. And you got to hit over. You have water left, water right, water in front of you. You get a lot of water you have to get over on your drive. So if you have a bad drive, you're going to you're gonna go out of, out of bounds. And you're going to lose water. I go in the water. So I, I, I've i hit that drive probably 800 times, 80% of the times, excellent, or at least playable, right? So I, it, in my skill level, as long as I'm playable, I'm happy. And yet... The first thing I think of when I get up to the tee box is those 20% of the negatives. So what I want you to think, right, and that's human nature is to go toward the negative for some reason versus the positive. Uh, I look at the positive everything now. So let's talk about the nosy neighbor when it relates to what we're talking about. The, my nosy neighbor, Marion, when I first started, all my listings came because Marion knew everything going on in the neighborhood and would say, oh, before you list your house, you got to go talk to Mitch. Right. Marilyn, Marilyn was an 80 year old lady, really, really sweet, two big dogs, which I loved. And uh, and she wrote dictionaries for a living. So think about this, Mr. ADD man, which I am. Right. And then you have people like Marilyn, who's obviously very OCD to write dictionaries. Who writes dictionaries? And she would tell everybody she'd come visit me every open house, which was every week, twice a week for the first few months that I started. And um, 
and she was great. So when I'm talking about my numbers, we're only going to talk about averaging two people a day. Right? These days, if you're doing these right, I don't have any of my agents doing that little. But that's how I run my, my thing. So if you average two people a day, oh, by the way, I think I mentioned this. It's the same house every single week, right? Every single week until it sells. All right. And the reason, again, is consistency. You want everybody to see you there. I have people jumping around. If you're going to do open, two open houses a week and do the same house, all the neighbors are going to see you there. What are the people in the neighborhood that have their houses listed going to see? They're going to see that their agent hasn't has even called them in three weeks. Uh, the flyer box has been empty for two weeks, and they see you there every week, every Friday, and every Saturday and Sunday, if not more. Like I said, if the house is vacant, uh, who are they going to list with if, if their listing expires or if they decide to fire their agent? Um, all right, so if only two people come per day, right? So that's two people come per day. That's eight people per month, right? Two times four, pretty easy. We're only talking about once per week. I will guarantee you a billion percent that two out of those eight are definitely buying a home. The challenge is, and I said this earlier, what you do today will generate sales for you in 90 days. So 90 days from now will be the first time you get the first contract when you're starting doing open houses consistently. After 120 days, 160 days, you will create a predictable business. I knew every month I was going to get two or three sales from open houses, a minimum one, and I did. I never had the yo-yo effect that most realtors have. You know, one month I have sales, the next month I have nothing, the next month I have sales because you, you're so never you're never generating leads when you're in the middle of contracts. For some reason, if you do this consistently, you will kill it. And by the way, when I was selling 80 homes a year, I still did an open house every weekend. I did it a four hour instead of a six because I had to break my life into quadrants. But I still did them when I was selling 80 homes because easy free leads. And they're, they're easy people. Once you learn how to do this, this is so simple to do. So this is how it works. And I'm going to start with January. So in January through June, you get two leads every month. So we get two buyers out of the eight. By the way, it's probably more. But we're going to be – I'm very conservative when I, do, when I do my numbers. So you get two leads, right, um, every month. First month, you're not getting any sales. Now, is it possible you will? Of course it is. Second month, you're not getting any sales. The third month in March, you're going to get your first sale from a lead that you got in January. April, you're going to get a sale from your January leads and from your February leads and, and so on and so on. I don't need to read this so you can see it. But my point is, is what happens after you get past the first four to six months of doing this consistently every week at the same house, you are going to have a predictable business. And if you did nothing else, if you don't do anything else, you're going to sell 24 or more homes a year. Now, the reality is, is once I got really busy, I didn't do a great job of following up. I probably, because I became way better at capturing leads and this stuff, I probably would have sold more than 24 homes a year from open houses if I if I had the time. But when you're doing 80 homes a year with just an assistant, I just didn't, I, just, I was working great. I was making as much money as I cared to make and I was doing fine. So I really didn't care. If I cared more, I probably would have done more. Okay. Any questions about that? That's open houses. Don't try to do this a different way. There's no reason to do it. Um, okay, so the question is, what do you do if your broker prohibits you from holding an open house for another brokerage? And some, this person obviously must be from EXP because they said like EXP. Um, so EXP, you can hold other brokers. You just have to have a form signed. It's a liability form. You can still do open houses from other people. They they don't have a problem with that. Um, you just have to have a form signed. We have agents that do that. There's a liability form that you have the other agent sign and it's or the owner sign. I, I don't remember which one off the top of my head. Um, but most people do that and showing uh, other listings is fine if you don't have listings. Uh, you know, Luckily for EXP here locally, with my area, we have about 130 listings, I think. So we have plenty of listings to uh, to do that with. But if you're in an area that doesn't have listings and your broker doesn't allow that, check with your broker if they'll, if they'll allow you to sign a, a liability form, which is what we do at EXP. All right. Any other questions on open houses? Okay. Oh, more questions, sorry. As we get questions, I'm going to answer them. If you are doing an open house for a listing that is not your listing, how do you handle signage in front of the house with the listings agent signage? I, you know, I've never even looked at that. Um, people build things with by relationships, right? So when someone comes into me uh, and doing an open house, 
and I have somebody else assigned, it doesn't really matter, right? Oh, that's I just say that's one of my partners. It's one of the people I work with. It, it's not. It's it's an easy. It's an easy uh, uh, handle. Uh, just remember, people do business with people because you built a relationship. If you built that relationship, you, you're going to get that customer. I, I, my first house I did was was with somebody else's. After that, I did my own listings. Uh, I never had one person out of tons of people. I never had one person in those four months ask me about the listing agent. Not one. Okay. Circle of influence. It, it, the oh, one more. Sorry, uh, I got another question. <laughs> Uh, what about door knocking the neighborhood prior to VIP preview announcing the listing? Yes, all of that stuff. And I, yes, and I, I could go on talking about about these things for for the rest of my life on on things. Yes, a huge thing I, I believe in and I like is um, is to go uh, and um, either send a postcard to everybody, uh, door knock to everybody. You know, between I'm doing my open house tomorrow from 10 to 4, but I'm doing a private VIP open house for the neighbors that from nine to 10, if you'd like to come by. Uh, one of my agents just did this recently. They had 40 people come by the open house before the open house even started. And she got two listing appointments from it. Piece of cake, right? So great, great question. And thanks, for, thanks for adding that in. Okay, and the reason why I, I, I you know, I can't do everything because there's only so much time that I can actually keep you guys here uh, on the thing. Cause I could talk about open houses for an hour. I could talk them for about two hours probably. All right, let's talk about circle of influence for a little bit. So. I have taught this to probably 500 people. You know what? I have probably taught this to 1,000 people. I only know two people that have done it, and, I'll, and I'm going to give you those stories real quick. One did it recently, and she used it in a text message. I think Kathy might be on, on here. And she got a few responses about a buyer and a couple, listing a couple of homes. Uh, another couple of my agents did this recently. I made them do this just with their past customers. And I think they had about 160 total between the two of them. And before they left my office, they had 10 responses. So we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Firstly, before I get into the system of circle influence, we're going to talk about your phone. On your phone, you have a lot of people, right? We all have a lot of people. I have hundreds of people on my phone. And I want you to, I didn't write this down here, but I want you to write this down. And I want you to try this today. You don't need to do it now because you'll miss my presentation. And I'm going to say this really slowly, which if you hear me talk, that's really hard. But I want you to do this today. And I'm going to give you this story. But before I tell you, I'm going to give you the story. Uh, I was, I've done this several times now. I learned this from my friend Gene Frederick. And last year in January, I was sitting there in February. I was sitting there with one of my agents and having a drink. And he was complaining because he had no business. And I said, take out your phone. And I made him write this, and this is what he wrote. I'm in a class right now, and we're having a contest. And I could really, really use your help. And by the way, the words really, really are very impactful. So you need to use that. I could really, really use your help. If you know somebody looking to buy or sell a home, could you send me their info, their contact info? Within five minutes of us sitting there, he got two leads and sold two homes in two weeks. How simple is that? So what he does now, every time there's a holiday, he just did it for Valentine's Day. I'm sure he's doing something for St. Patrick's Day. He sends out to the same group. He has about 90 people that he sends us to. And every time he does that, he gets one or two leads. So this, you know, our Valentine's, uh, won't you be my Valentine and send me a referral? You know, little cute little graphics he sends by text. And everything has to be individual. You can't send it as a group text. Hi, Bill. Then you can copy and paste the message. Hi, Tom. Copy and paste. Hi, Sue. Very, very simple. So I'll, I'll say that line one more time. It's, hi, Bill. I'm in a class right now, and we're having a contest. And I could really, really use your help. If you know somebody looking to buy or sell a home, could you send me their contact info? I did this not too long ago at a class I was teaching on 34 Ways to Generate Leads, which is a great little class which I'll do out here someday for the status fair um, and I told everybody to do this we had a hundred people in the room and I gave an eight minute window I said we're gonna have eight minutes now I want you guys to do this for eight minutes in eight minutes those hundred people generated 185 leads now one thing to think about I'll guarantee you that 50 of the hundred people didn't even do it but we generated 185 leads 
from this group of 50 to 100 people who are doing it um, in eight minutes. Take advantage of who you know. So that is part of your circle of influence. It's not my program, but it's part of your circle of influence. Uh, one of the mistakes I see from realtors everywhere I train all over North America is they don't ask people for business. You have to ask people. If you don't ask people, how many realtors do you have in your area? I'll give you an example. We have close to 4,700 realtors now here. I know we have at least 4,500. And so how many realtors does your, do your people know? Everybody knows two, three, four, five realtors, right? Especially with Facebook. But who are they going to give the business to? They're probably going to give the business to people that ask the business. All right, so let's talk about it. This system, by the way, the reason why people haven't done it is because they haven't taken the time to do the first part I'm going to teach you here. And if you don't do this part, you're wasting your money. I'm going to give you an example. I, I, had, a, I had an agent come in the other day. And actually, she's on here, so I'm not going to mention her name. And, but she might smile because she knows who she's talking about. And she's been with us for a few months. She's getting very frustrated. And I, you know, I teach what we're showing you today. I teach to all my agents. Any agent that comes on to me, I sit them down for an hour. And we have these, we have the same conversation I'm having with you guys right now. And I teach them this. And I, I said to her, I said, so let me ask you a question. You know, we talked about open houses. I said three or four months ago. How many have you done? And I want to, I don't remember the exact number. I think it was one. Yeah, well, then you didn't implement that, right? Okay. She was like, yep, I didn't implement that. And I said, did you talk to, you know, do anything with your friends and family? Did you create your list? She said, no. I said, then you didn't implement that. And this girl, by the way, is going to be a rock star because she's amazing. But you can be a rock star potential. But how much does rock, rock star potential pay your bills? It doesn't pay your bills, right? So that was our conversation. So if you don't implement, I can teach you till I'm blue in the face. I've, like I said, I've had locally 500 agents over the last many years. And I can tell you that probably 5% implemented anything. And people pay me, you know, one to $2,000 an hour to coach. Well, not anymore because I just don't want to do it anymore. But that's what I was getting, one to $2,000 for consulting or whatever. I have a couple groups I still charge a lot of money. But, you know, I do it for free now. It's more fun. But the number one thing is implementation. And if you're not willing to implement, you're in the wrong business. And I, I'm just telling you from the heart here. Uh, this is the easiest business I've ever done. I've owned 22 companies in 40 years. Yes, I am that old. I'm 59 years old. I've owned my first business. I was 19. And the one consistent with all those businesses, I had to generate leads and I had to implement systems. All right. The worst business I've ever owned in my life was a brokerage. Being a realtor was the easiest business I've ever done. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a broker anymore. It's one of the reasons I merged with EXP. I didn't want to do it anymore. It was, it was not fun. Uh, no matter how much I wanted to help people become successful, they, they don't implement. They don't do it. And anybody can do this. I did it. I'm living proof. I knew zero people. I had I had no circle of influence when I started. Um, and I was able to still build a very lucrative real estate career as a realtor. All right. I won't lecture you anymore, but I could lecture you for two hours. Um, you know, is today a good day to change your life? I'll ask you that. Is today a good day to change your life? All right. So let's talk about this because we've got about 20 more minutes to get through this. Create four lists. I want you to create a list of your friends and your family. And when I talk about friends, I'm talking about real friends, not not people that you call friends. I have lots of friends, but I only have a few real friends. So you make, and a real friend, by the way, is someone you break down three hours away and they'll come pick you up. That's a real friend, right? Um, so make a list of your friends and family. Your second list is everybody else, all your acquaintances. I know a gazillion people here now after being here for 20 years in Brevard County, especially being in real estate. Um, very few of them are my friends, my real friends, but I have lots of acquaintances. So those are my other list. Uh, I got a question here. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm going to talk about just move. If you just moved to a new state, we're going to talk about how to generate sales from the state you are in a second with the next list. The next list. So this is for you, uh, is out of area. Make a list of all your out of area friends and family, right? And acquaintances. So every so I moved from Boston. I know everybody in Boston, right? I made a list of all those people. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So that's your third list. And then your fourth list is past customers. And by the way, if you are new to the air and you have nothing, no circle of influence, open houses is the best way to lead generate. 
there's no better way to lead generate. You can knock on doors and all that stuff, but then you're chasing business. I don't like to chase anything. I want people to come to me. Um, okay, so these are your four lists that you create. We're going to talk about those real quick. First of all, you need an email program. I use MailChimp, MailChimp.com. that will allow you to put 2,000 contacts up there and 20,000 emails per month at no charge. Right? 2,000 contacts. So it's free. It's a free program, and I use that, and it's a great program because you can see everybody that's opening your emails. I'm sure maybe you've used Constant Contact, but I can see everybody that's engaging in, in, in my thing. And if I'm getting a 20 or 30% engagement rate, that's awesome. Right? Not everybody's going to read your emails. Um, again, we always tend to go toward the negative. Don't go toward the negative. Go toward the positive. So instead of saying, oh, 70% of the people didn't read my email, say, hey, wow, 30% of my people read my, email, read my email. That's a lot of people. Constant contact, I believe, starts at $20 a month. And one of the things I tell people to do, to do, don't use your CRM for this because your CRM becomes too flooded. The only people that you're going to put in your CRM are people that you start to engage in when you start to do this program. Okay? You're going to email everybody once a month. And I might already talk about this somewhere else, but I'm going to talk about it now. So on the first of the month, you're going to email everybody, right? And all I do, all I do is one email a month. Now, I'm not doing this anymore because I can, I don't want to do business. But all all you want to do is do this once a month. Now I have friends of mine that do this twice a month and do really really well at it. Um, if you do it once a month, you'll do great. Good. If you do it twice a month, you'll probably do great. I never did it twice a month, so I can't tell you how good that is. Uh, for your friends and family email, you always want to start about something personal. All right. So uh, yeah, so with me, it might be Lola and Henry and I played our first open mic. My granddaughter's a singer, and my grandson's playing bass, and I play guitar. I, we did our first open mic. It was really fun. Here's a video of it. Um, and then I would go into, by the way, what I want to do with my friends and my family is make sure you have, by the way, these local friends and family, right? Uh, that you have um, everything going on in the area, so you know all the market updates. So you know, I'm gonna, below is all the list. Now every every board that I know of. We'll send you a list of market updates every month. All, all you're doing is copy and pasting that into the body of your email. Very simple. And then you're going to end every single – by the way, all of our emails are ended like this except for the, the out-of-area people. As you know, as a realtor, I work by referral only, and I could really, really use your help. Is that word again? Really, really. If you know anybody looking to buy or sell, would you mind sending me their contact info? Because think about this. If you know 250 people, right, and those people all know 250 people, how big is your actual network of people? It's gigantic, right? All right, so everybody get that. I'm going to leave that there for a second. As you know, as a realtor, I work by referral only, and I could really, really use your help. If you know anyone looking to buy or sell, would you mind sending me their contact info? Right, very simple, very easy. And this is my email. Now, almost all my letters are exactly the same. And I'm doing this letter once a month. And I would recommend that you sit down this week what day are we on wednesday today thursday today so today and tomorrow spend about three hours and write 36 letters and then you're done right and then you just copy and paste that into the into the email every every month your acquaintances i don't get into a lot of personal stuff with my acquaintances okay um frankly i don't care uh no i might it depends on my mood but i'm not gonna you know i i just I don't know. I don't. I just don't. But anyways, um, I, same messaging. One of the things I like to do with my friends uh, in Brevard County is to let them know how the market's going, right? That's it. Then I send the market update and the same email. Can anybody? So you're basically writing the same email every month. You're just going to adjust it. And we're going to talk about that in a second. You're just going to adjust it each month. This is what I want you to do for your out-of-area people. I made about an additional $20,000 a year when I first got in the business because this is what I learned. And this is what I would tell my friends. One thing I've learned about most about realtors is that there's a huge difference between good agents and bad agents. If you know someone who's looking to buy or sell, please let me help them find the best realtor in the area. Picking the wrong realtor could cost them thousands. So I did that to all of my friends uh, and, and family and acquaintances up in Massachusetts. And every year I would get 10 or 20 of them. And what I would do is I'd go online and I'd find three realtors and I would interview three realtors in that, their area to make sure they were the right people. And then I would recommend them. Now, I don't get much of that anymore for a couple of reasons. I don't um, 
I don't um, uh, I don't want the business, and I gave all of them really good realtors. So there's no reason um, there's no reason to to really pursue that anymore, right? Uh, now, occasionally, I'll still get a phone call from somebody. I got one recently, and I refer them an agent down in um, where are they looking. They're down in Jupiter and uh, Boca Raton, that area. So I'm referring them out to there. But I don't get them as much anymore. But that was my big thing for an extra twenty grand a year, my first year in the first couple years in the business, just by doing that. So really simple. So make that list, and then finally, past customers. Again, I'm starting off the same way. What? I, and by the way, I never call a past customer past customer. Um, I always say my friends because they, you know, I want the, I'm their friend. Remember, I told you at the beginning this is all about relationships. Uh, so it's the same messaging. Um, the only difference I do with my past customer is this is really important, is because you already built that relationship. So you're not trying to rebuild another relationship. On the 15th of each month, send them a postcard, an actual real postcard, in the mail with all the events going on for the following month. Really simple, right? So these are your these are your mails. So you can literally write all these mails emails in a matter of a, a few hours, and then you're done for the year. So making the list was, is going to be the longest part of this. It's going to take you probably I don't know three four hours. I'm getting ready to do a workshop. We're going to do a live workshop doing this, and I'm actually going to make the agents who come to the workshop spend three hours writing their list. And I think in three hours you could probably put everybody's name and email address into a spreadsheet, right? Okay. Uh, other subjects you can talk about during your emails is a uh, list of vendors. You know, I, you know, you need any work done in your house. I know lots of people that do lots of things. You know, if you need a, a plumber, let me know. If you need an electrician, we work with some of the best in the area. Uh, another question, another thing, if you'd like, um, if you, you know, if you'd like to keep track of your your area and your your neighborhood, if you'd like, I could set you up so you get all the new listings and homes that go get sold and contingent listings inside of um, your neighborhood. I can do that for other neighborhoods too. If you're looking to do uh, look at other neighborhoods around around the county, let me know and I'll get you set up. Um, I say market analysis here. I never say market analysis to a customer. Uh, when I'm talking to a customer, I, I will, one of the other things would say, you know, if you'd ever like to know the value of your home, let me know. A lot of people don't know what market analysis looks like or means. If you'd like to know mortgage information, right? So these are subjects and you can come up with whatever you want. I'm sure you're creative enough to come up with more subjects. But this at least will get you in the right, um, in the right frame, in the right messaging to get people to respond to you, right? It's all about getting people to respond. And again, by using those programs, Mailchimp and things like that, you may not get it. Now, here's the thing: the people that are not responding to your emails, right? Call them. Call them. Pick up the phone and call them. Say, "Yeah, I've been sending you some emails about what's going on in the market. I'm just curious if you've been getting them." Right? It's a great opportunity to pick up the phone. Everything we're talking about, by the way, on, on the email stuff here, is fine, but it's not the best thing in the world. Email is still, you know, picking up the phone builds the best relationship. And let me, let's talk about open houses for a second, because uh, I'll, I'll use that. If, if you, if you're a customer and you go into my open house and then you go into John's open house down the street. And John only texts and emails you, and I pick up the phone and have a conversation with you and build a relationship like we talked about earlier. Who are they going to use as a realtor? They're always going to use me. Always. Because I built relationships. So even though we use email to break the, you know, break the ice here, it still doesn't replace picking up the phone, especially on your past customers, especially with your connectors. Inside your, your network of people, you know lots of connectors. Connectors are people like myself. I know everybody. If you told me you need something for somebody anywhere in this country, pretty much, I know somebody. And so I'm a connector. So I'm somebody that you want to take out for lunch. And by the way, a lot of people call me in different industries to take me out for lunch. Right? And I like that. I get a free lunch and I and I share. And then when I talk to people about that stuff, you know, about what they're sharing with, and I'll give you an example. I met with a guy about reviews the other day. And we end, I ended the conversation after he gave me his how he does what he does because it's phenomenal. And I'll do another class on that at some point. Um, I said, okay, now what can I do to help you? So every time I meet with somebody and I ask them for help, I ask them what, what can I do for them? All right, we're going to end with this. Uh, just a couple little things. Hopefully this all makes sense for you guys. Um, other ways to generate leads. I love, 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 love Starbucks. And here's how you do Starbucks. Uh, I got a friend of mine's agent who does 30 transactions a year 
by sitting in a Starbucks from 8 to 11 every every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, he's been doing it for two years now. Now, this past year, he had 30 transactions from it. Um, pretty cool, but here's how he does it. He sits there from 8 to 11. He positions himself so everybody in line can see him. And, uh, and on the back of his computer, it says, real estate question, ask me. Now, he does this every single day. Monday through Friday, and he's been doing it every day for two years, except when he's been on vacation, right? And think about that. When when you go, you know, think with Starbucks. When you go to Starbucks, you see somebody walking there at 9.02 today. That guy's there from 9.02 tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. Starbucks, for some reason, has a very loyal, time-conscious clientele. Uh, it's, he told me it took him about two months to really get rolling. Uh, and then it started. Think about the whole concept of that. People would um, would come to uh, – Come to Starbucks, see him, not ask him anything, you know. Then go home, say, "Hey, your wife might say, hey, you know, we need to, we need to think about downsizing. The kids have moved out, you know, but we've been here for 20 years. I'm not even sure how to do that." And then husband goes, "Oh, you know, there's this guy at Starbucks with this says, says real estate questions. Ask me. I'm going to ask him tomorrow." So he gets tomorrow, and now you just capture the lead. Now, if you're not there, if you're not consistent, right? What happens? They call somebody else because they all know four or five realtors. So that's one thing. Staycations, I love. So especially if you're in, in an area like where I'm at or San Diego, where I was last week. Um, but if you go to a place like, for here, instance, here, I would go to the Crown Plaza here um, and spend the weekend there. Have a really nice weekend. A, I get to write it off because I'm working. And B, I'm going to just hang out at the pool. I'm going to hang out at the bar. And I'm going to talk to as many people as I can. I'm going to be wearing an EXP Realty uh, polo shirt. And why are people why is this a good thing because people that are there are generally on vacation they're generally not from your area they generally don't already have a realtor easy stuff right um build your own networking group i love this one so everybody's heard of b and i and this i know this, the chamber has lots of networking groups but be the leader people like to work with the leader so you, you all know a plumber a financial guy an electrician a surveyor you all know a home inspector you know everybody we all know everybody in our business. Start your own networking group and be the leader. Uh, move-in parties. Move-in parties are great. Say you have a, a big sale, right? Say you have a, a, a really high-end sale, whatever that may be for you. Tell your buyer that you'd like to throw a housewarming party with um, five couples, six couples, eight couples, whatever that happens to be with you, of their closest friends. Order, get a chef, right? It's going to cost a few dollars. Get a chef and... And throw a party, a really high-end party for that person. And who, you gonna, who are they going to talk about? I, I can tell you, I went to a party with a high-end listing I sold recently, and I was the star of the show. Everywhere I, everywhere I went, the guy's like, the guy's name is Joe. He's like, hey, you got to meet Mitch. Mitch is my realtor. He's awesome. Every person. I, there was like 30 people in the room. I met all 30 people. It's great. I did another one of these once, one of these events once, and I got two high-end buyers from it. But you can also do this on your lower price stuff. You can do a welcome to the neighborhood party. Right, welcome to the neighborhood. You know, get a banner. Welcome to the neighborhood. Send a postcard to everybody in the neighborhood who you sold that 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 in the the house that you sold. Right, the neighborhood that you sold the house in. Say, I'd love to have a little housewarming party uh, to the Joneses. We're going to be doing it in their driveway. In their driveway, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, beer, and wine supply. And I've done this several times, and I always had 30, 40 people there, and people ask you questions. Now, again, it all comes up to follow up. If I don't follow up with those people, and I got lots of sales doing this, if you don't follow up with those people, you're not going to get sales. But what a great way to, A, make your, your customer feel great and introduce them to all the neighbors. All right, country clubs, yacht clubs, same thing to me. Uh, if you have a country club near you or a yacht club, you should be joining those. Because where do all the people that have a lot of money hang out? They hang out in those places, right? Uh, I, I know a guy... His entire business is sitting at the yacht, the local yacht club here, and he does a ridiculous amount of business. And, and again, if I wanted to do business right now, I would be there. Uh, but all he does is he goes to the bar, uh, you know, like four to six every night, and hangs out at the bar. That's his, that's his Starbucks, and he has his logo shirt on. And now, I mean, he's a fixture there. Everybody knows him. He knows all the rich. All of his listings are high end. All of them. He does amazing work. He does a great job. And finally, my last thing I'll leave you on is get out of the house, right? If you're sitting home doing nothing, what are you going to get? You're going to get nothing. So any questions, because we're going to call it, I like to do no more than an hour. We're at 11.55, so I did good timing. Any questions about anything? 
about life, about dating. Um, no, no questions. I love that. It means I must have done an awesome job. All right. Thank you so much for coming to the webinar today. Um, I'm here to help. If you have any questions about anything, reach out to me. I'm, uh, I, I do this, you know, I do this as much as I can. And, um, and I, and I, you know, I, I love helping people. It's really what I get out of the, out of my life these days is helping people get there, reach your goals. I've reached my goals. I've reached all my goals, but I'm living an amazing life right now. I want to teach you how to do that. Uh, I did get one question was this, uh, how can you get the recording? I'm going to send this out to everybody. So, uh, I will, I will send this out as soon as I do. All right, everybody take care. Have a great life. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.